Hello family, my name is Chris, I am your Home Gamer Dad, and with the recent release of Resident Evil 4 Remake, I decided that it was a good time to take a fun journey down memory lane as I talk about how I enjoyed the original Resident Evil 4 that was released way back in 2005. Whether you rescued a dog in the beginning or not, or happened to have some choice words for Ashley as she disobeyed you while you ran through a horde of enemies, doesn't matter what system you played it on, because this was released for all the system. Always remember that your journey through Resident Evil 4, the original 2005 release, will differ and your mileage may vary. Before I begin my list, I just want to mention that Resident Evil 2 is actually my favorite Resident Evil game of all time. I actually did a Your Mileage May Vary for Resident Evil 2 specifically not too long ago. I think I, you'll have a card up here uh, to be able to find that. Resident Evil 4 is a close second. Now, don't get me wrong. This 2005 release is... It has some issues to it. It is not a perfect game by any stretch of the words. Some of the camera angles are completely janky. As mentioned before, you have some choice words for Ashley because I didn't mind her AI, but there were times when it just did some really, really dumb things. It's not a perfect game, but you know what? It dang ranks very, very high on a lot of people's lists, including my own, as like one of their favorite games of all times. And I've had a long history with the game that I want to share with you guys that does actually stretch back all the way to 2005 because I did have the original two-disc uh, game of Resident Evil 4 for the GameCube, if you can even believe that. Oh, guys, that seemed forever ago. And as far as the remake goes, all of I've played of the remake is the demo, so that's all I've gotten my hands on. Granted, I've seen way too many spoilers already, thank you internet, but for right now, I'm really just going to concentrate on the original game, the first one that I played, the one that I played on multiple systems, and I'm sure if you're watching this, you have too. So here we go, let's get to that list. Number one, it revolutionized survival horror games. Love it or hate it, Resident Evil 4 was a benchmark for survival horror games going forward at the time. Usually when you thought of survival horror games, you had those like, uh, what was it, the, the fixed camera angles and whatnot, where your character moved along using tank controls, where up moved you forward even if you were facing the screen, and that was really hard to move around and everything, but that was all the old Resident Evil style games, 1, 2, 3, and Code Veronica. Resident Evil 4 gave you that over-the-shoulder view where you could see directly in front of you all the time and wherever you moved is where Leon moved. Then you would aim your gun and you had free movement over where you aimed the gun as well, whereas in the originals, you kind of just aimed and shot and hope you hit your thing unless you had like a target control or a aim assistance on. Resident Evil 4 was also the beginning of what a lot of people call the action series for Resident Evil, where it was kind of focused less on scares, but more on just incoming hordes of enemies and you just taking them down one by one by one, using your weapons, you know, bang, 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 shooting through mobs of enemies, which, you know, 5 and 6 really took that to the nth degree. But there was something about Resident Evil 4 that still also maintained a horror sense to it. From there, other horror games took this, like, template and made games of their own that still stand up for today. For example, the biggest one I can think of is Dead Space. Dead Space took a lot from Resident Evil 4 and brought it to, you know, their vision of the game, like uh, Visceral Games, EA, whatever. They took that whole thing that they saw Resident Evil 4 for and they made Dead Space out of it. The over-the-shoulder shooting thing, the survival horror, you know, the way that Isaac moves and everything. Now, granted, Isaac can move while his gun is drawn. Leon cannot, at least in the original uh, Resident Evil 4, which in my mind, it's a psh, whoa, my god, I can move while aiming. Uh, but if Resident Evil 4 did not exist, we wouldn't have Dead Space in the form that it's in now. And that's, you know, great to know because now that Dead Space also had a remake and people who, and like show how much they love that series, we'll get more of that. And then we're also going to get more new things coming out for Resident Evil as it also continues to evolve. That's what this is all about. It's all about the genre evolving from one thing to the next, what works, what works with the current, I guess, market of gamers that are out there, what they're looking for, and then ultimately paving the way for future games. Number two, seeing Leon and Ada return was amazing. 
So Resident Evil does like to bring a lot of their old characters back into the limelight because ultimately they're trying to make one cohesive story between all the games. Doesn't necessarily always work, but at least they try. And up until that point, you had uh, Jill coming back uh, in Resident Evil 3 because she was in Resident Evil 1, and then Code Veronica brought back Claire and Chris uh, just showing their continuing adventures. And it was really cool seeing Leon come back as well because... I liked Leon the most in Resident Evil 2. Leon is like, I'm a cop, everything's going bad, um, I just gotta help people and do the best I can. And then he meets Ada, who is basically this polar opposite of him, who is there to steal secrets and try to like gain uh, an advantage for Umbrella, or wherever her employer is at the time, uh, which is generally Umbrella, obviously, and just doing what she can and just kind of seeing this like spark in Leon and starting to develop like a relationship with him. Now that was explored a lot more in Resident Evil 2 Remake, but at the time that didn't exist, so you just had Resident Evil 4. So when Leon encounters Ada in Resident Evil 4, it's this really cool scene where it's like they know each other and there seems to be even more history there than what the game leads on. Now, there's a few scenes where you see Ada pop in and out uh, without, you know, them actually meeting. But then that eventual scene uh, in uh, the part of the castle, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then Ada jumps away and everything. It's like, oh, wow, there they are. They see each other. That's so cool. And then, of course, you know, they meet up here and there as well. I don't know. Just seeing the characters brought back. Uh, in different, you know, updated graphics as well, because the last time we see Leon, he is in that weird polygon of, like, skin or whatever from the original Resident Evil 2 from 98, and now here we are in 2005, and he's way more detailed, way more mature, as you would say, and, uh, you know, Ada just also doing her thing. Ada looked gorgeous in Resident Evil 4, which is pretty much how I expected her to look based on her, you know, polygon look from Resident Evil 2. And uh, her voice just matched perfectly. At the time, it blew my mind, and I'm like, that was awesome, this is great, oh, I want to see more, what else do these characters have in store? Little did I know what exactly was going to happen in the future for these games, and that Leon was going to become as popular as he was. But it was just cool at the time to see all those characters come back, look different, but are still the same characters, and seeing how they grow. Number three. The enemies actually had really good AI, and got better, or worse, depending on how you played. This was something I did not know existed in the game until much, much, much later, and I'm pretty sure most people didn't realize it either until, like, people started doing some data mining or whatever, and actually seeing that within Resident Evil 4, there was a gauge that always took into account how you, the player, were playing. For example, if you went into an area and just mowed down Ganados, like, left and right, took no damage, you had great ammo conservation, just boom, 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 down they go, the game actually took this into consideration and started to make the difficulty of the game harder. It gave the enemies more health, it gave them uh, stronger attacks against you, and made items harder to find. Say you died over and over again. Heck, everybody knows that one room in the castle that you walk into and it's just this massive ambush. The room seems to take four ever to get through. You're with Ashley, you have uh, cultists with their shields and the scythes and this, that, and the other thing. That room was so, so annoying, but at one point you're rotating, uh, what is it, the, uh, the stairs that come down, and it pops down, and two cultists come down holding scythes, and they catch off guard, and they kill you. Now you're going to go ahead and reload the game. You may have died three or four times prior to getting to that point. You go, you reload the game, you get to that point again, you undo the stairs, you get ready for them to come down, and nothing. Because the game sees, all right, you're having a little bit of a hard time, we're not going to spawn as many enemies, we're going to take out some enemies, maybe make it a little easier to kill. So this way you can move on and enjoy the game, rather than being frustrated and stuck in one spot. This actually made it possible for anybody to play the game to be able to continue progress and ultimately, you know, see the end of the game. The enemy AI is really good too, because this is the first time where you have enemies that move at a decent speed. Usually in your Resident Evil games, you're fighting zombies, like legit brought back from the dead zombies. But they're fast, the Ganados and the enemies and the cultists in this. They they flank Leon, so you have two people coming at him and the rest go around him to try to get a, you know, a better uh, attack view of him. Uh, they distract Leon while they try to grab Ashley and get out of there. This game is smart. 
it is probably uh, not as smart as the games are nowadays, but when it was released in 2005, it was definitely something that threw you uh, for a loop as a gamer because you're used to enemies just kind of coming at you maybe one, two at a time, and you just boom, 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 that way, you know, take them down. Now you have them coming at you, and all of a sudden you look to your side and like, oh my gosh, they're over there too. you got to reposition yourself, find a funneling point so this way nothing comes up behind you, and be able to take them out as they come at you that way. Great, great, great uh, enemy AI design for this game, and I'm glad that as games went forward, that AI just got smarter. Number four, what are you buying for the attache case? Is that what it is? The attache case? I think that's what it's called now in Resident Evil 4 Remake. I always called it the attack cache. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. These are two great additions to Resident Evil 4 that were not in previous Resident Evils, that were not in even really previous survival horror games in general, whether you played like, you know, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or anything along that ways, is that one, your inventory system was literally a box. You can open that up and you can play Tetris with your ammo, your guns, and your healing items, and that's how you held on to all your stuff. And as you went through the game, you were able to get bigger and bigger cases so you can store more items, more healing supplies, things along that ways. But there's just another way to play the game, another way to interact with it, because you always had an inventory system in the Resident Evil games where you had to figure out how you're going to hold everything and what's important and what's not, whereas here, it's just a nice way to put everything together. And all of your key items and any of your fun treasures that you find and everything are a separate menu. They do not go in the case. So it's just, you have those that are pick up. You don't have to worry about not being able to pick them up, but then you also have, do I have enough room for this ammo? Do I have enough room for this grenade? What about these healing items? Oh, I better use something because I'm running out. Furthermore, playing off of that is the merchant. Oh man, this guy is awesome. He is, I don't know what he is. People say he's a Ganado. People don't say he's a Ganado. I don't know what his role is in Resident Evil 4 Remake, but I know he's in it. You could upgrade your weapons. You can upgrade your uh, attache, case, whatever you want to call it. Um, you could put it by body armor for Leon. Like there was a lot of really cool things that you could buy from the merchant that helped Leon in the long run. And it actually felt like a good progression. Your guns got stronger. Your guns got better. Leon himself, you know, got just all the upgrades with the bigger case and the body uh, armor to reduce damage and things along that ways. And other Resident Evil games did not have that beforehand. Everything was always, you know, fine sight on scene and everything. You know, you find it wherever it is in the environment. Uh, even the enemies in Resident Evil 4 dropped items. You never had enemies drop items before. Now, granted, it did take away a little bit of the horror aspect of uh, Resident Evil. Survival horror games are based on limited resources. You only have a certain amount of items that A, you can carry, and B, you can find in the environment in order to help you survive through the course of the game. Resident Evil 4, because enemies dropped uh, ammunition, you're kind of always getting a, a nice supply of it. You don't have to worry about like, oh, I should run around this enemy, or I should, I should avoid this enemy, or whatever. Actually, there's even complete portions of the game where you have to defeat all of the enemies for something to trigger. The striker shotgun, which is the last uh, shotgun you get, uh, when you do that final upgrade, the chamber is able to hold, I think it's 25 shots, and then it jumps to 99. My shotgun is all I needed for the remainder of the game. And I walked into any situation being like, I don't care. I got 99 bullets in the chamber somehow, and then another like 100 in my case. So I'm good uh, to go. And that, again, just just doesn't make it scary anymore. Uh, it just makes it like, all right, so what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And it's just, that's all that is from there uh, forward. Still an awesome concept. Still really cool to see and play around with and just to kind of go in and mow enemies down. But it's the good with the bad, and that's just kind of how that works. Number five. I am not ashamed to buy this game again and again and again. And I don't just mean buying the remake as, like, buying the game again. I have played Resident Evil 4, the 2005 version, on the GameCube, on the PlayStation 2, on my Wii, on my Wii U. I think I had it for my Xbox. I gotta double check. I don't remember if it was around for the Xbox at the time. I've played this game on a lot of different consoles in a lot of different ways. And uh, if it just keeps coming out, I'm gonna buy it again. I have it on my PlayStation 4 right now as I'm doing this, the 2005 Resident Evil 4. And I've played it two or three times on my PlayStation 4. 
the thing is, like, with Resident Evil 4 Remake, I'm, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to play it, but I'm not in a rush to. I thought I was going to be, like, super hyped, and I'm seeing all the reviews. 10 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10. Great. That's wonderful. I played the demo for it on my PlayStation 4, which, if you're curious to see me play through that, I have it on my... Uh, my Let's Play channel, uh, Metal Blade 427, uh, you can see the card up here or whatever. I did do uh, the demo playthrough just for the first time to see how it plays and whatnot. You go through the village in that demo and it is almost shot for shot exactly like going through the village in the original. Now things are different, I am thrown off at one point. I have this path that I always take, this route that I always do in the village in order to be able to try to get as many of the items as I can and then get into a spot where enemies just come to me where I take them down. That route is messed up, well not messed up, it's changed I should say, in uh, the remake because they added in a window so now enemies can actually come in from a different side and throw me off guard that way. Uh, so it's it's cool to see the changes and everything, but it's still the same game. It's turned up to 11 again. Uh, it's uh, gorier. It's it's a little bit more fast paced. The enemies are way more aggressive, but it still is Resident Evil 4. Leon even says the line, where's everybody going? Bingo at the end of it. So as you can see, I'm torn. I'm torn with it because I love the remake. The remake was awesome, but I played the remake of 2 and 3. Resident Evil 2 remake to me was absolutely amazing because even though you were in the same uh, scenario, everything was different about the game. You couldn't just go in and be like, I remember what I did here, so I'm going to do it here. That's not going to work for Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 3 was a little bit more of a issue, but we'll just leave that as is. Resident Evil 4 so far just seems to be a lot of the same stuff, just better graphics, more blood and guts, and enemies look cooler. I don't know. I, I, I have to see a little bit more into it. Um, I'm probably going to watch some other people do playthroughs of it once it's released, uh, with it being released by the time this goes up and everything, and, you know, make my judgment from there. But you know what? Regardless of anything, I'd love to hear your opinions on Resident Evil Remake, how it compares to the original, and what do you like better. And there you have it, my journey with Resident Evil 4, and it's not over yet, it is literally just beginning. Well, I wouldn't say just beginning, maybe we're in some type of the middle range of it or whatnot, because I can't see another remake of this game coming out anytime ever, in theory. Um, but. If you're curious about seeing me actually play through the original Resident Evil 4 from 2005, I do have that as a full playthrough on my Let's Play channel that I mentioned earlier, Metal Blade 427. I'll pop that up there or whatever. So you can go on over and check out that playlist. It is a Let's Play of the game. I had a great time going through that. And again, the game is fantastic. It is so much fun to play as. I may, you know, say things about it here and there. But again, it's not a perfect game. I have to be honest with you about certain things and whatnot. But I still love it so much. And yes, I I'm excited to play the remake eventually, just not anytime soon. Once again out there, let me know what you think of the original Resident Evil 4 from back in 2005. How do you like it? Do you enjoy it? Is it one of your top 10 games? Or were you not absorbed by the hype whatsoever? Is this like maybe a bottom game for you? Or you're just like, eh, I could live without it type deal. In any event, you guys have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so, so much. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Home Gamer Dad so you don't miss any future gaming videos or other fun things that I happen to put out for you to enjoy. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. We are family forever, gaming together. My dad advice for this video would happen to be, be careful around crazy parasite worshipping cults. They may not lead you to the salvation that you are hoping for. Just my two cents. Take it as you will. Until next time, everyone. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.